I now have the conference over the Mr. Jigar Kamdar from Systematic Institu Institutional Equities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Lizan. On behalf of Systematic Institutional Equities, I welcome all participants for Apollo Pipes Q1 FI22 earnings con call. The management of the Apollo Pipes will be represented by Mr. Samir Gupta, Managing Director, and Mr. Ajay Kumar Jain, Chief Financial Officer. Now I hand over the call to Mr. Samir Gupta for opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Uh, Mr. Gupta, we are not able to hear you. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you uh, for joining us on the Q1 FI22 earnings call to discuss the operating and financial performance for the quarter. I trust you and your families are safe. I hope you all had the opportunity to go through our figure presentation, which provides details of our operational and financial performance for the quarter Q1 FI22. To begin with, I am pleased to share with you that we have reported a linear performance during the quarter. Our sales volume decreased marginally by 2% to 10,402 metric tons due to countrywide pandemic and sluggish domestic demand. However, our cost of optimization measures and improved contribution from the high margin fitting segment resulted in a better gross margin performance during the quarter. Furthermore, expansion of our product portfolio, improved reach in new geographies, and addition of our new downfield capacity uh, assisted uh, volume growth. Over the next few quarters, we anticipate this sales performance to strengthen that by improving demand, improvement, and more uh, extension in markets and a sustainable uptick in utilization level. Moving on the operation front, we have successfully completed all our concrete manufacturing extensions across facilities located at Dadri, Tumkur, and Sikandrabad. Though operation of our greenfield facility at Raipur, which would have an installed capacity of 7,200 metric tons per annum, is delayed due to impact of COVID, uh, COVID, second wave of COVID. However, we expect to commercialize this facility from next month, that is August 2021. So in all, with the addition of new capacities, we will be able to uh, notably scale our volumes in the coming quarters. In addition, we are aiming optimally utilizing our, utilizing our capacities over the next two years, which will also help to uh, organize our sales volume going ahead. From a product basket standpoint, we continue to witness a positive traction in queries of APL Apollo water storage tanks. We have already doubled our capacity for water storage tanks at our Sikandabad plant and also commissioned our production line in Tumkur to ensure that we can increase demand. We have identified a strong business segment for this. Uh, we, we have also identified a strong business segment for us, which is path settings. This is highly fragmented industry, which will give potential uh, for Apollo to emerge as a leading brand. Margins are superior in this segment. We are confident that this product, along with our other value-added uh, offerings like fittings, solvent, cement, and addresses, will enhance our reach and strengthen our sales going forward. To conclude, I would like to state that we are constantly working towards enhancing our presence across the existing and new poten uh, potential geographies. Once we complete optimization of our plant, we expect to address the untapped and high potential market of Eastern and Central India as well. Going forward, we expect to deliver a robust performance in the quarters to come and further gain the momentum on the back of improved totality and extension in geographical areas and better than acceptance. On that note, I would now like to invite Mr. Ajay Jain to run you through the key financial highlights for the q Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. I will briefly cover the financial performance given the quarter of Q1 FI22. The company delivered a linear operational and financial performance during the quarter due to constraints like countrywide pandemic restrictions and sluggish domestic demand. Sales volume for the quarter stood at 10,402 metric tons, decreased marginally by 2% YOY as against 10,633 metric tons which was 80% of uh, sales volume of Q4 FI21. The revenue from operations for the quarter stood at 137.6 uh, crores as against 92.5 crores in Q1 FI21, higher by 49% YOY. On the profitability front, EBITDA for the quarter grew by 182% YOY, which is stood at 17.4 crores as against 6.2 crores in Q1 FI21. <coughs> EBITDA margin, which uh, stood at 12.7% in Q1 FI22, 
as against 6.7 percent in Q1 FY21, higher by 5.98 bps. Going forward, we anticipate EBITDA margins to normalize from quarter two onwards. Interest cost is stood at 8.8 crores, up by 3.38. Uh, sorry, interest uh, cost is stood at 1.1 crores in Q1 FY22, as against 2.1 crores in Q1 FY21, declined by 50% YOY. Back for the quarter stood at 8.8 crores, up by 338% YOY, when compared to 2 crores in Q1 FY21. Back margins for the quarter stood at 6.4%, as compared to 2.2% in Q1 FY21, higher by 420 deaths. Last but not the least, I'm happy to share that uh, our company is not leveraging our balance sheet for any extension projects. I believe our cash flow to this going ahead will improve on demand and productivity. Uh, uh, moving forward, from Q2 FY22, we are discontinuing quarterly volume disclosure ahead of quarterly results due to sensitivity of data. So with this, I would now request the monitor to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants requested to use handsets for asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Bhargo from Kotak Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, to you and congrats for the uh, this performance. Uh, yeah, my you. first question, uh, uh, sir, is on the volume breakup. Is it possible to share the volume breakup uh, uh, between agri and non agri? Uh, because uh, our volume decline is just about 2%. I just wanted to know how has been the breakup between agri and non agri. Between agri and non agri, the ratio is somewhere else. 55% will be the agri business and 45% uh, uh, is the uh, building products. And is it possible to share the YOY volume growth for agri and non agri? YOY for quarter? Yeah, yeah, for the quarter. I've heard of another way. Um, so, um, so, so when we say that uh, 45 uh, building material in Q1 and 55 agri and infra, um, this is uh, with the fact that Q1 is seasonally heavy for the agri side. Otherwise, this would have been like 50-50 uh, what we closed FI21 at. Right, and uh, in terms of value growth, uh, the the building material um, uh, revenue has uh, grown at uh, fifty percent on YY basis, because because the proportion was uh, proportion was uh, very low uh, in Q1 of FY21 uh, because of lockdown and uh, and heavy sales from the agri and infra uh, side uh, in Q1 FY21. And how about the agri portfolio? Has it declined in double digits? No, even agri, we have uh, we have uh, seen uh, a double digit growth uh, uh, in Q1. So one new growth. Okay. Value base, yes. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, is it possible to know what has been the operating cash flow and free cash flow generation in the first quarter, and how was it on a YY basis? So, uh, so, uh, so on cash flow basis, uh, um, the the uh, we are still a net cash uh, company. Our net cash stands similar to what was uh, there on uh, on thirty uh, first March twenty twenty one, except that uh, there is a slight uh, increase in the working capital because of uh, the lockdown uh, restrictions what we witnessed in Q one. Otherwise, um, 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 the the operating cash flow will be better. Uh, this, uh, if we, we remove the increase in inventory, uh, that remains um, that remains uh, same what we witness in FI21. On the uh, branding side, uh, how are we looking at spending in FI22? I believe we've appointed a couple of new brand ambassadors. So, how is the branding spend likely to pan out? 
So, uh, so Bharda, uh, um, see, I mean, if you look at our uh, ad spends uh, so far, uh, right, which are mainly focusing on be below the line branding uh, campaigns, right, uh, um, uh, we are spending anywhere around one to two percent of our turnover. Okay, mm -hmm. depending on like uh, which campaign goes in uh, um, any specific quarter. With uh, with our focus now turning on above the line uh, aggressive campaigns uh, with appointment of uh, um, Bollywood celebrity etc., uh, we should be looking to spend around three to three and a half percent on our full year FY22 uh, revenue um, estimate, uh, which we believe will uh, give us a very strong and aggressive ad campaign to uh, to come up with. And lastly, how is the plastic process business doing? I believe we are uh, sort of now uh, away from the gestation period and now the business is looking like coming on, on stream. So is it possible to share the size of the business, margins in this business, whatever you can share? So, uh, so Bhargav, I mean, uh, this is something that we are very excited about um, uh, as we speak today, right? What we have, uh, uh, what we have seen is that this industry is highly fragmented. Okay, with the absence of uh, large formal uh, organized players, okay, where we think that uh, uh, we can uh, fill a big gap, uh, okay, which has been um, there in this industry uh, with uh, superior margins. So we have been adding new product range uh, at our plants, um, right? Uh, uh, our our focus, uh, our target was to generate like five percent of our turnover from this segment, which we believe can potentially be above ten uh, percent now. Okay, so uh, we, we, we also uh, appointed uh, uh, Bollywood Celeb specifically for this segment with enhanced packaging uh, and, uh, and a revised, uh, um, a revised uh, 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 brand campaign, so which is yielding uh, very good results and, and, uh, and we are hopeful that uh, this business um, uh, could be a very big uh, revenue lever for uh, Apollo and it will help us meet our uh, Target of uh, thousand crore turnover um, on uh, on uh, sustainable basis. This ten percent of revenue target is by what period? F Y twenty three or F Y twenty four? I mean, if things go as per the plan, uh, you might see us hitting ten percent of uh, of turnover in F Y twenty three itself. Okay. And is it fair to say this this has higher margin than the I business? Yes, it has. Okay, I'll come back in the queue all the way. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is on the line of Shalin Kumar from UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, uh, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. So just first of all, uh, just an observation. Uh, when I was going through your presentation, uh, you have 1,500 SKUs and you're talking about 2,500 SKUs. Uh, while your capacity, while your expansion plan of capacity of 125,000 is already already there, so uh, like, will you be able to launch this these extra SKUs from your existing capacity, or you need additional capacity for that? Uh, hi, Sri. Yeah, marginal capacity additions will be there on account of such products which we are adding up. But mainly, we are working on the fitting side, which has high volumes, uh, high margins. So the you can say value added such products will be added, which are be, the modes will be added, which will be you can say run on the uh, same machines which are already there in the plant. So maximum investment uh, will be there on the modes uh, which we are planning for increasing this SKU. Right, sir. And so what kind of capex are you looking at uh, for let's say next three years? So let's say you are targeting 20-25% uh, growth. What are the capex you are looking at? Um, let's say for next three years. On a we are we are targeting a capex of uh, roughly around 20 to 25 percent of the vital level per year for over the next two years, and then certainly we get a good, very good opportunity to diversify our business. Otherwise, we will be sticking on the uh, same level of 20 to 25 percent as a you can say regular investments on the uh, uh, SKUs or uh, other you can say normal machines. So, so no 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 major capex. Uh, no major because we already have the capacity with us to uh, uh, announce our sales to 1200 crores or 1300 crores. So we don't actually need to reach the first target of 1000 crores for for uh, in capacity. Uh, we need to invest in the capacity for achieving this target. So whatever the target uh, investment we make in the coming future, it will be adding up the uh, target for the country coming years. So right now we don't need actually any uh, major expansion or major capex for the uh, for the current target. Uh, right, sir. Right, right. 
Permanent, you can say that uh, stability is there. Uh, any any new co- company can come and drop their prices and take over the business. So that is not our business model. So we are much more focused towards trade sales than the retail sales. Right. Uh, if I to add here, just to add here that uh, the medium through which we sell our products is 90% B2C. Okay. B2C. Now within B2C. Okay. Mm-hmm. Within that, there are two kinds of application where our products go. One is agriculture and infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Second is building material, right? Mm-hmm. So today, 50% of our uh, products go into building material space, and 50% of our products go into agriculture and infrastructure space. But the medium to sell these products is 90% B2C. Basically, via distributors, right? Via via distributor network. Yeah, yeah distributor. Uh, right, right. Uh-huh. okay and also uh, in terms of the uh, concentration or you know strength uh, are there are there like a specific uh, areas or tearing of the towns where we have strength or where we are targeting like to you know uh, we see that there are the, there are very much possible gaps in certain region of the country or maybe the town like tier 2 town tier 1 town obviously irrigation would be in rural areas but you know building material and infrastructure Well, Shaleen, I mean, uh, if you look at Apollo Pipes today, majority of revenue is coming uh, from North Region still, right? Mm-hmm. Because we started expanding uh, into Pan India markets uh, uh, from 2018 itself. Okay, uh, first plant we put up in West India, then we acquired um, um, uh, when we acquired the Kisan Moulding Plant in in South India. Now we are just on the verge of starting our uh, uh, fourth plant in Raipur, which is in India. so for uh, for apollo pipes uh, we have uh, fairly good uh, uh, potential to uh, to expand our sales into these geographies because we are very new here and uh, with the focus more on uh, distribution expansion and retail penetration we are getting good response um, and which will be fueled with our ad spends which will go up in fy22 and and our consistent or uh, constant addition of uh, product into our sq portfolio so 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 this is giving us a good opportunity to keep on expanding and grow our sales uh bases like rural or or um, or urban uh, i mean uh, in in building materials mainly you are selling a products in urban and semi urban uh, centers uh, agri and infra is mainly uh, semi urban and rural areas right uh we still think that there is uh, uh, maybe scope of uh, new capacity in, in the in, in the uh, to further expand in the west markets because maharashtra is a very strong uh, market uh, for uh, for for pvc which mm-hmm. we may evaluate at some point of time but i think uh, for us to grow within uh, the closer markets near to our uh, plants so i think we our business plan of 1000 crore turnover um uh, should should uh, should be achieved um, by constant uh, distribution network into uh, areas near our plants understood understood all right all right over uh, i'll get back get back to the queue thank you so much thank you we'll move on to the next question start from the line of shreyanik bachawat from jm financial please go ahead Hi sir, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, could you please uh, help us understand what will be the sustainable gross margin level going forward? The sustainable gross margin will be on the same line of 13 to 14 percent that we are targeting right now, because of the most uh, most focus on value added products here. So, we are trying to maintain the same uh, gross margins in coming uh, in some coming quarters and years. Uh, uh, so, which this is EBITDA margin? EBITDA, so, yeah, we are talking about the EBITDA margin right now. And the gross margin to be used for some days. So the gross margin, the EBITDA margin. Yeah. Yeah. So see, I mean, we have been uh, we have been uh, talking about uh, EBITDA margins uh, with uh, the investors and analysts. Okay. Um, the reason is that uh, it also takes our sales promotion and expense into consideration. 
um, and um, just to answer on gross margin front, it's a clear function of uh, constant increase of value added products uh, to our uh, turnover, which is mainly driven by building material products uh, such as CPVC, more fitting sales, uh, solvents and adhesives, uh, water storage tanks, and and uh, plastic bathroom fittings. So so gross margin should constantly move up. Um, and at EBITDA level, um, um, the target which uh, our business plan suggested that 13 to 15 percent kind of EBITDA margin uh, on sustainable basis is is possible. And for our new greenfield plan, when we started operation, our operations. Um, you mean the Raipur plant? Yeah. So Raipur plant uh, is just on the verge of getting uh, commenced. Um, uh, it's just that we are waiting for small and final approvals from the local authorities which should come um, over the next few days, and then we are ready to go. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Anubu, I missed the, uh, the answer on the volume degrowth on the agri side, if you can repeat that. No, there was no degrowth. There was uh, double-digit growth. Um, I'm talking about volumes, volume, not uh, value, because the realizations have increased significantly. No? Volume. So volume was flattish. Okay, at 10,500 ton. Okay, um, um, there was like marginal two percent. So let's assume that it's flattish. The reason uh, uh, the the volume was flattish uh, in Q1 FY22 was that in Q1 FY21. There were heavy sales coming from the agri and infra side because the government had started spending heavily on the on the agriculture after the lockdown restrictions were uh, uh, lifted, um, right? So um, so that gave us good volume, right? And the revenue was around uh, 950 million INR versus like uh, in Q1 FY22, our volume remains almost same and our revenue value wise uh, inch up to 1.3 billion. Right, so um, so so this explains the uh, this explains our uh, this explains the shift of our sales from uh, non-building to building material, and this journey had been throughout in FY21, right? Um, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q1, and and it has been consistently around 45 to 50 percent um, our building material uh, volume, which was like 30 percent in Q1 last year. Sure. Sure, sure. And the, uh, uh, on the volume guidance part for this year, you, you are targeting 25% CAGR volume growth over the next uh, uh, few years. So how does this year look like given, you know, we have seen degrowth in uh, Q1 and any idea on or any, you know, feedback on how the Kharif uh, sales in Q3 for the pipe uh, season, for the agri pipe season looks like? So I guess, I guess, I mean, for us, our business plan, how we are looking at it as that uh, we are targeting revenue, okay, and then uh, volume is the derivative of that, okay. So, so to achieve thousand crore turnover, what kind of product uh, portfolio, what kind of sales mix uh, we have to achieve, right? So, so, so that's how we are uh, going about it. Um, uh, we think that uh, today the platform what we have created. Okay, it has potential to give us 30-40% revenue growth in FI22 uh, and FI23 um, uh, consistently, right? And uh, the volume growth could be high double digit here, uh, right? But the majority of uh, uh, value will come from uh, uh, the uh, sale of value added products, which are like better superior realization, which are better margin products. That is true, Anubha, but you, you you would also realize that you know PVC prices have increased significantly, and you know that would also aid a realization part even on you know uh, simple PVC pipes. So you know uh, volume growth uh, do, uh, for this year, do expect we can uh, in the next uh, three quarters if we don't see any significant hit because of uh, third wave of COVID, you expect double digit growth in volumes. So like I clearly said that we are looking at high double digit volume growth uh, for for next two years, right? And 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 see, I mean, um, when we say that the revenue growth will be 30, 40 percent, the EBITDA growth will also be same, right? If if I am considering if I am considering the high realization on the back of uh, high PET prices, uh, right? Uh, high high PVC prices, uh, then my uh, EBITDA would, wouldn't grow at the same pace. So I'm saying. 
30 to 40 percent revenue growth, 30 to 40 percent EBITDA growth. That's how we're going to achieve 1,000 crore turnover over the next two years. Sure, sure. And on uh, 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 any inventory loss because of PVC prices coming down in the quarter? Yeah, there was some inventory loss, but that was not too much because we were trying to increase our sales on building products with, through which we were trying to uh, mitigate the loss of and marginal loss of the inventory inventory loss in this quarter. But again, going forward, the prices have rebounded and we don't see any major inventory loss in coming days also. And okay. moreover, moreover, I think, uh, I mean, uh, rather looking at like quarterly inventory uh, plus minus, uh, sure. What we believe is that uh, today we are uh, we are uh, capable of delivering 13 to 15 percent EBITDA margin on sustainable basis, irrespective of uh, fluctuation in the PVC prices. Okay, so uh, so I mean PVC prices are are going to be like plus minus every quarter, every month, right? So what we do is that we work on minimum inventory levels so that uh, we mitigate the risk of any fluctuation, uh, uh, which is which is coming from the uh, PVC pricing, and uh, second, focus on value-added products where the gross margins are so high that uh, four five percent uh, reduction addition in uh, PVC prices won't impact our business model. So, uh, so, 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 so the point what we're trying to make here is that uh, um, you look for uh, you look uh, upon us that we're going to deliver thirteen to fifteen percent EBITDA margin, irrespective of how PVC prices would be here. Sure. And two, two, two broad questions on the strategy part, uh, Anubhav. You know, uh, we uh, we have done exceptionally well over the past few years in diversifying from agri to almost you know 45, 50 percent contribution from uh, non-agri portfolio. And one thing we have been noticing is that all uh, you know smaller regional players, including us, are trying to you know make it big on the building product side. And uh, agriculture, uh, and not uh, any bigger, and even the smaller and mid-sized players in the industry are not focusing much on the agri side. And with the past one and a, one one and a half years of COVID impact, do you see there is some vacuum being created on the agri side, and the tough competition that we are seeing on the agri might ebb down, and uh, the building product segment might become more competitive than uh, uh, agri side, uh, uh, agri PVC pipe uh, industry over the next uh, few years. See, there are two things to it. Okay, one is that uh, I mean, why why we are focusing more on building material today uh, than agri? Not because like uh, the building material name looks fancy. It's about the margin. Uh, it's about the return on capital employed. What we generate uh, from building material portfolio, right? Uh, building material margins are like almost like two times of what uh, you achieve in agri side. Okay, so so that's what is. Uh, making us move towards the building material space uh, right so that is one second i mean i mean uh, the the competitors the weak competitors on unorganized sector informal sector i mean not only in covid wave two i mean look at what's happening since 2016 which started right from demonetization then gst shock then ngfc crisis then gdp economic slowdown then corona wave one then corona wave two so there is a, a, a there is space which is being vacated by smaller players, not only in agri but also in building materials. Uh, like in all in in whole of uh, 30,000 crore, this PVC industry uh, category, right? And this is the reason that uh, this is one of the reasons that why we could achieve uh, such a healthy growth rate over the last three four years, um, right? We have been we have doubled our turnover, almost doubled our turnover in the last three years, right? And now we are on a platform where we say that we could double our turnover from here in next two years. Right, so, so, uh, so I guess it's 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 not a function of like uh, uh, agri versus non uh, agri. It is more function of where we can get uh, uh, leverage on our brand, where we can get superior margin, where we can generate superior ROC for our business. You know, I understand that part, uh, uh, but what I'm asking is, do you see the, 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 the competitive intensity uh, reducing on agri part and increasing on uh, building material part because, you know, all the, even small and mid-sized players are looking, by, are looking at the fact that uh, non-agri portfolio or the building product uh, uh, segment is, uh, is, has better economics, has better margins, ROC, and even uh, it's not lumpy or it's not seasonal like uh, agri. So do you think the, uh, the better economics of building product segment might uh, lead to this space crowding up and 
the margins and economics reducing uh, ankit actually let's answer to this uh, actually uh, what is happening with the building process that it is not so simple as we think like every agri businesses like in agri business only we have to put extruders and extrude the pipes and there is in building process you have to have a complete management of the fittings and all those uh, you can say 1500 sqs and we are talking about 80% sqs are from fittings only so we need to manage all those things for any unorganized player or small players it is very difficult to manage the show with such high number of sqs and maintain the inventories or deliver the goods in time or deliver the right good at right price so we need to have complete management for this thing and which is not possible for any unorganized player where uh, they face lot of trouble because of uh, tax savings and because of un, you can say un, uh, uh, you can say un uh, competent people with them and because of not good infrastructure with them so that is actually the problem with them and so these people or these uh, type of uh, unorganized uh, industry will continue to work in agri business only where the margins will always be in pressure we cannot expect a high margin uh, for these uh, these product because of very you can say that uh, you can say easy business of uh, producing pipe and delivering it to the uh, customer whereas in building product you have to have a complete infrastructure so that is the main difference between agriculture and non agriculture if any new company wishes to enter this uh, product then they have to have a complete infrastructure and complete setup to to deliver the goods to uh, to get the results so uh, by that you, you can understand that the agri business will be you can say uh, you can say low margin product in coming days also and building products will be you can say a high margin product because of that constraints in it so sure. that was really a question and that last question on our strategy for you know building plants with uh, with low install capacity and geographically diversifying you know we have seen some companies uh, putting up big plants and the companies like us we we establish a smaller plant and uh, with, uh, we establish a plant with uh, smaller capacities and then ramp up uh, or increase capacities over the next uh, few years so yeah. any uh, yeah any views on this strategy and how is it different than you know putting up big capacities at a single location and you know uh, trying to you know uh, uh, achieve better economics of uh, scale or uh, uh, from that particular location thank okay. you yeah that is one idea i have agree to you that uh, once we build up the sales or in that area then the uh, putting up a big plant is of course that is more advisable other than that wherever we are putting up the plant the main focus is to produce wherever the low margin products are uh, they are like uh, pipes we don't have uh, good, good margins and we need to deliver the goods to the customer to uh, deliver build other kind of value added products so with that view we are putting up the plants to deliver low margin items produced locally and uh, producing the high margin products at our main plant at or some good where we are producing fittings and other value added products to deliver all across india and if we deliver these goods from the dadri plant the freight factor is very low because of the high margin and high cash value products the freight margin is almost 2 to 3% of the concentrated total volume and whereas if we produce it locally the prices or the investment will be much higher as compared to this so we, it is a much more advisable to produce it at a uh, center location and distribute it to the all the cash uh, uh, areas where we wish to sell at a uh, common point at, at the plant where we are like at amdavad or tumkur or uh, this uh, raipur we are creating a super stock over there and uh, distributing in small quantities from that plant to the nearby areas okay okay thank you that was really helpful thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference we request you to limit your questions to two for participant only The next question is from the line of Shalu Afija from Anvis Research. Please go ahead. Hello. 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 Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Good afternoon. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sir, my first question is, uh, I want to know the uh, reason behind uh, operational profit margins decline in quarter one financial year twenty two as compared with quarter four financial year twenty one. Uh, in the quarter four, as compared to, uh, if we talk about the margin in quarter four and comparing quarter one, the quarter four we had a uh, you can say inventory gain in that quarter so that was actually helping us. Otherwise, our sustainable margin is 13 to 15 percent only, which we are targeting and we are achieving on the we are working on the same line. Okay. So this goes this goes as per the industry norm. Okay, this is nothing specific to Apollo pipes. If you look at uh, the numbers of any PVC company who would have reported, uh, you will find the similar trend. Okay, sir. And sir, you know uh, the current capacity utilization. The current capacity again uh, because we have uh, 
high uh, capacity is available, so we are not able to utilize that. Moving forward, we would be using them. Currently, it is around 40%. So, uh, and in the coming uh, two, three uh, quarters, uh, how uh, we see uh, it, uh, it will go up? So, so see, I mean, Q1, we did 10,500 ton of sales volume with our okay. capacity of 118,000 ton, which is available. Uh, in Q2, uh, the available capacity should be 125,000 ton as the Raipur plant would start. Um, uh, last year, we did 48,000, 48,000 ton of volume. In FY22, we believe that uh, high double-digit growth in volume is uh, is possible. So, so the utilization level uh, uh, rates will definitely go up. You can calculate um, uh, with the numbers which we have given to you. Okay. And uh, what is the debt level currently? We are a net like cash sure. company. We are a net cash company uh, with uh, with a net cash of uh, 100 million INR. Okay, uh, as uh, there is increase in cost uh, in interest, what is uh, like what is there in that? Uh, I'm sorry, please come again. Uh, interest cost. Interest cost, right? Includes what uh, like which item uh, is coming so, in interest? So, uh, so, so, so that's on a net level. We are uh, we are a cash surplus company, but we have a gross debt, and then again that we have uh, fixed deposits in the bank. Uh, okay, so interest cost. What you see is from uh, uh, the uh, from the gross debt. Against that, there is other income which we receive interest uh, on our FDs. So, so that what so it gets uh, nullified. Both uh, things get nullified net net. Net net, we are a net cash company. Okay, sir. And uh, sir, uh, can I know the current market share in uh, India uh, of our company? Uh, so, so this so the total industry size stands at around 30, 35,000 crores, um, uh, okay, on annual basis. Last year we did 520 crore of turnover, so you can calculate our market share. Okay, sir. And uh, sir, can I know the uh, individual uh, capacities of the uh, products? Uh, uh, not really, because uh, uh, like plumbing, uh, pipes, and fitting. Yeah, that, that's a bit of sensitive information. So, um, so we are not uh, comfortable sharing this information. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. That's the call. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Gada from Abacus Asset Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my uh, first question is, uh, uh, so I, uh, you mentioned about Brandex being close to 3 to 3.5 percent of our uh, uh, sales in FY22. Uh, uh, can you help me what this number was in FY21? In FY21, we were at 1.5 uh, percent of, uh, of uh, total sales in FY22. So you can calculate. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so uh, when uh, uh, we are we are planning to increase this by another two percentage points, uh, do you still believe that this 13 to 15 percent EBITDA margin guidance that you are giving for FY22 that is achievable? Yes. Uh, uh, so, um, so all the all the uh, all the additional incremental uh, profits which will come from the value addition that is going that will go into ad spend, right? So that's why we think that um, it is it is going to remain. Uh, stable between 13 to 15 percent. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so just uh, uh, then in that case, uh, 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 can you help? I guess uh, our value-added products when we mention, so we include CPVC fitting uh, and maybe even plastic uh, faucet that we're planning now. So, so what is that percentage share uh, in terms of revenue in FY21? FY21 was 50-50. Okay, Q1 was uh, 45 towards value added because uh, Q1 is no, sir, sir. heavy or agree. I'm I'm talking about the uh, fittings and uh, uh, CPVC specifically. Okay, so so okay, so fitting and CPVC put together would be uh, around 25 to 30 percent. And how do we see this moving in the next couple of years? So CPVC, we are growing at 30, 40 percent uh, on annualized basis. And uh, fittings also, we are uh, seeing very strong growth, same similar growth rates. So, um, so, so this proportion should be uh, like uh, going inching up uh, incrementally. Okay, and uh, I don't want a specific number, but uh, how much higher in percentage terms, at least uh, 
would the gross margins in these products be compared to our uh, base product so i, I mean um, see i mean um, since we are talking on ebitda level so let me tell you on ebitda level uh, the agri portfolio delivers margin uh, less than 10% okay right. and uh, the value added building material portfolio uh, delivers margin more than 15% okay okay fine sir Th- thanks for that uh, sir and then secondly uh, regarding our raw material procurement uh, i guess uh, earlier we were doing close to 80 90% imports uh, and uh, since uh, this entire covid situation has happened uh, we are doing more domestic uh, procurement i am assuming so what would that percentage now be in terms of for pvc specifically so pvc we are, uh, we are procuring all our raw materials for uh, tumko raipur and andabad plant from local sources whereas from badri plant it is around you can say 80% from imports and 20% is from uh, uh, local sources so put so together so then, somewhere around 30% and 70% you can say that so 70 is domestic and 30 is uh, no, no, uh, imports 70 is imports and 30 is domestic okay uh, so uh, uh, when we say that uh, we we have not faced many major inventory losses uh, uh, what would be our uh, raw material inventory generally number of days it's less than 30 days always it's less than 30 days uh, okay okay thank you thank you so much sir thank you thank you the next question is in the line of karan from Asian Market Securities please go ahead hi sir thank you for the opportunity and congratulations for the set of numbers i uh, just wanted to have some thanks on the dealer inventory uh, as on july and uh, i am asking in the context because we have seen some price correction uh, from april until second week of july and suddenly we have seen okay. 1.5 karan uh, sir so your voice is breaking up can you use the handset mode while speaking Sure. Thank you. Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to have some sense on the dealer inventory as on July end. I'm asking in the context because things April we've seen some southward movement in the PVC prices, and suddenly from second week of July we've seen some 1.5 to 2 rupee price peak. Uh, so how is the channel reacting to the same? current your voice is actually breaking uh current i can't hear you um, i'm sorry um uh, probably um, you can go back in the queue and uh, so you you can disconnect and call again meanwhile we can take another question yeah i just open now so yes, please say and please say hello uh, please say, please say. sorry to drop karan but we are not able to hear you sir uh, maybe the sir i will rejoin in the queue thank you The next question is from the line of Madhav from Fidelity Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I just want to understand, like, what what is happening on the uh, on the Nalsijal program? We've heard that uh, traction is picked up uh, across quite a few states. Are we seeing demand coming to uh, organized players like ourselves as well, or is it more restricted to some of the more unorganized players in the market? actually uh, the demand is coming up uh, to the organized sector also and we are also receiving good demand from this sector from for nalsa jal yojana but of course uh, because it is a government supply the unorganized sector is a bit strong because of that you can say local presence over there with the local authorities they are able to work very easily whereas for us uh, we have to do a through a channel so that is a problem otherwise we are getting good demand from this sector also but our main focus is not towards this thing but uh, on regular basis our uh, uh, you can say the, uh, the you can say the products uh, because we are uh, producing to, uh, quality products and we are, don't compromise on the quality front so that is a, a bit of challenge for uh, supplying to these uh, government supplies otherwise we are supplying regularly to this uh, program there is no uh, you can say we are getting regular orders from them then uh, you know when we did like a very broad calculation at our end it seemed like um, uh, if all the demand i mean given how much budget the government has increased for this program in this fiscal if if that demand actually comes through the piping industry in india can expand by a good amount like you know maybe 15% or which is a very large number 
do you think that kind of action is happening on the ground in the next one two years the piping industry can expand yeah, by that quantity yeah, yeah mother actually the demand is floating in the market the demands are there but it basically depends on the funds or the fund allocation the department has with them so that the contractor can easily to uh, can supply the material to the departments so that actually that trouble is there of course the demand is there and it is actually very big number but the fund problem is there so uh, people are not very you can say that uh, aggressively supplying to this uh, this yojana uh, because of that uh, so, they, so that they don't get stuck with the payment problem with this department so so mata i guess i guess this is going like a typical government project where the announcements are uh, heavy right uh, the the capex plans etc are always uh, aggressive and and higher in number um and and uh, and see it's 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 a, it's a big project right it's it's uh, it's linked to like multiple states uh, some funds coming from central some funds coming from state government right so a lot of government machinery um, has to uh, get oiled here for the smooth functioning of this project so i guess with the limited uh, resources uh, uh, government could uh, allocate um, the project is going at a decent pace not at the pace what pvc players would uh, uh, like to have but uh, there is a like constant uh, flow of orders uh, um, and and uh, based on like everyone's capability to uh, to uh, to to generate margin and and uh, and collect uh, receivables collect cash right from the authorities they are they are participating here for us i mean it's a, it's a, it's a regular government project we were never too much excited about it our uh, because our main focus has always been towards uh, trade sales where we could sell uh, uh, our brand on our terms to our clients and uh, uh, how different broadly with the margins and the receivable uh, title be for these kind of projects versus our trade sales uh, so so margins will be like single digit uh, okay and uh, and the the um, credit cycle uh, would be like Uh, up, can go up to like three months also. Okay, understood. And just uh, the other question from my side was, uh, I don't know if you've already addressed it, but in general, how is the demand condition right now? Uh, once the second wave restrictions have gone down, is demand like growing uh, uh, at a healthy pace again for us, or is there still some challenges being faced? Yeah, of course, the demand is uh, coming back in position, and we are getting good, I can say, response from the market, backed by, I can say, aggressive marketing and good uh, uh, product market and good product, uh, I can say, product reach also. So, demand according to us, it is ramping up, and we are uh, hoping that uh, a bit of can slow down in agriculture demand may be there because of the rains. Otherwise, uh, regular demands of the building boards and other, you can say, other segments are there with us, and uh, it's ramping up back to uh, back to normal position. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Bhimrajka from Monarch AIF. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, sir, and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, sir, regarding the new product, uh, I, uh, you were talking about uh, high-value fittings, uh, fittings product along with plastic bathroom uh, products, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what would be our strategy for this uh, plastic bathroom uh, segment? What is the market size currently, and how do you? Uh, what are the target market? If you could elaborate a bit, uh, that would be great, sir. Yeah, actually, the this plastic bath fittings they are mainly you can say that sold in the tier two and tier three cities, where they uh, people don't spend too much on the houses or they can say that uh, uh, for homes the expenditure is very low. So we are targeting these those types of cities only. And first of all, this um, uh, the market is very much unfragmented. It is very much unorganized. Very few organized players work in this segment. So lot of you can say scope is there as compared uh, if we talk about the market and the uh, market potential. And if we talk about that. that uh product position we are trying to position our product uh, you can say along with the uh, leading force in this uh, in this uh, product uh, along with the leading brands so we are quite hopeful that we may uh, can increase our sales to at least uh, you can say 100 cr in the you can say in next two or maybe two and a half years we may uh, uh, ramp up our you can say uh, product line or production to that uh, level because the potential is there and the demand of the organized players works is there in the market and lack of uh, the organized player is giving us good opportunity to sell our product okay so this will be mainly for your current catchment areas of north state uh, or will you Uh, look to add uh, a few other markets in other parts of the country. 
no, we are right now for bath fittings, we are targeting uh, Pan India. Right now, focusing towards the nearby area of Bangalore plant, along with that eastern region and the uh, northern region. Okay, okay. Uh, sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Jaspreet Singh Arora from Equintus CMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, just a quick, like, some clarifications and some specific questions. So, the 25% volume CAGR is over the next three years, while current year we're targeting a high double digit. Is that what, what what's being uh, given? So, what we are saying is that um, we will achieve 1,000 crore turnover by FI23. Okay, so that makes 35-40% uh, revenue CAGR. This will be supported by high double digit uh, volume growth. Uh, high double digit, okay, okay, fair enough. And that's the 1000 crore is March 23, uh, fiscal year March 23. I mean, assuming there is no third wave, uh, sure. etc., I mean, uh, in sure. the non pandemic period, if we, if we get uh, the platform, um, this is achievable. Sure, sure. And uh, the second thing is related to the uh, capacity. Uh, so we go up from 118,000 to 125,000, um, uh, you know, next month. Um, the Dadri uh, brownfield would add more, right? Is is that is that correct, or uh, am I missing something? No, no. Um, so so uh, so. Um, Deep water making, whatever is there. Yeah. Dadri brownfield is like whatever has to happen. It has happened. Okay. Now we are sitting at 118,000 tons, and seven seven thousand ton will get added next month from Raipur. Okay, and that is that is where we stop and but there's also something mentioned uh, regarding uh, exploring more uh, more brownfield stroke debottlenecking expansion opportunities over the next few quarters. Can you elaborate on that? So of course, see, I mean, uh, when we say that, uh, um, I mean, the immediate target uh, is 1,000 crore turnover, right? And then, I mean, as a company, we do believe uh, in the industry space where we are, given the brand we would have built over the next two years, given the SKU portfolio addition, what would have happened over the next two years. So we do believe that 25-30% uh, consistent uh, uh, revenue CAGR is possible. So for that, we will have to keep on doing some brownfield expansions, right? We'll have to keep on adding new products to our portfolio. Right. Uh, um, so, so, so what we meant was that 25, 20, 25% of our beta we should be uh, spending on uh, on on such uh, capacity additions. And and apart from that, uh, West uh, region is one market where we think we could add another plant. Which right now we have in uh, one in Gujarat. There could be something coming up in Maharashtra. That's what we believe. Okay, okay. So uh, the volumes uh, we've done uh, last year was uh, 47,000 plus and now quarterly of 10,000 plus. So uh, what is based on the current capacity, maybe at uh, whatever you want to take, maybe 125 or 118,000, what is the uh, maximum production possible in a fiscal year and in a, in a particular quarter, whichever be the best quarter or seasonally? Just trying to understand what's the best uh, utilization we, uh, is possible on a, on a practical basis. 100,000 tons. That's per on an annual basis. On an annual basis, on capacity of 125,000 tons. Okay, and on in a particular quarter because there will be a lean in and there will be a best quarter. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, probably like uh, uh, Q4, which is uh, which is uh, good for uh, both agri and building materials. Uh -huh. So the skewness over uh, there could be like uh, 25 to 30,000 tons. 25 to 30,000. So we could go as much as 100% in a particular quarter if if the demand allows. Uh, yes. Roughly speaking. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Just trying. Was just trying to understand what's what's the. I mean, in in two years' time, possibly that could be the exit run rate. Uh, let's say you're talking March 23. Maybe the March quarter of that year could could be something closer to that. Just trying to understand. If, yeah, if, I mean, if if environment remains safe uh, uh, for the business, definitely. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Fair enough. Fair. fair. Uh, uh, thank you so much, and all, all the best. Yes, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Shah from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. A couple of questions. Uh, first is uh, you did indicate your comments on Nalta Gel. Uh, what we uh, understand from the marketplace is the PSA is actually going for uh, a different set of poly 
polyolefin set of fittings uh, to cater to this large but uh, typically a low price segment. Uh, so what are your thoughts over here and do we have any, uh, uh, are you looking to venture into this segment to better tap into Nalsejal as a team? See, again, I mean, uh, see, the government schemes, uh, I don't know if you noticed, like, four or five years ago, there was uh, this uh, LED bulb scheme from uh, the agency called EEL, right? Um, uh, they were selling LED bulb for 40 rupees. And all the major brands, uh, uh, which are, like, uh, spending hundreds of crores on their, uh, like, ad spends every year, they participated uh, you know, uh, for those orders. And the margin, what they were making was 25 pesa for one LED, LED bulb, right? So, so I guess, I guess, I mean, um, um, of course, everyone wants to venture out which, whatever comes uh, from the government uh, when it's new. Um, then uh, people understand that, uh, you know, what kind of margin return profile you are going to make. So, um, so I guess, I mean, same is here, right? So, yes, there could be some opportunity for low price tax, profit, etc. But, but again, I, I mean, um, when it's like on L1 uh, ordering basis, right? It's very difficult to sustain the margin. I mean, we are talking about margins in our tap business, the tap faucet business, upward of 15, 20 percent, right? Where we have appointed uh, a Bollywood uh, celebrity. Uh, uh, we have a separate branding strategy to penetrate uh, deeper into the markets. Uh, um, uh, rural uh, market is one category where our sister company, APL Apollo Tube, has done so well with the product called Apollo Chocolate. Right, it was a steel door frame which replaced uh, wooden door frames, and today uh, we are selling 250,000 uh, door frames every month. Okay, so uh, so I mean that's the power of your brand, of of the distribution, of your trade uh, um, channel, right? So I mean as a company, we have decided to focus on that. Right. Uh, yes, if there is any opportunity which is uh, profitable, which is ROE, ROC accretive, definitely we'll go for that, right? Uh, we have our uh, ears on the ground. So like in the earlier question, someone was asking that why are you not going into agree when there could be some space vacated? I mean, so we are having our ears on the ground, right? So if there is any opportunity which arises, we'll definitely go for it, right? Um, but yeah, it has to be within our uh, set benchmarks, right? Margins, ROC, um, 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 and 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 working capital. Right. So if if I could just take a step back and understand Nalsejal, uh, you also indicated that the local companies are benefiting more. So if uh, Apollo had to benefit or the larger organized sector had to benefit out of this, uh, how should one look at it? So is it a no-go zone or is it uh, we have a certain hurdle rate? Uh, only then we will actually go and. Uh, do a bidding for a particular SKU or a particular order. So you indicated 15% plus margins on the tap business, which is lucrative. So is it something like it has to be minimum at a company, a blended level? Uh, how should one look at it? Yeah, so so number one, it's a, it's not a no-go zone. Okay, we are already selling our products uh, in, 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 in these projects. Okay, now you talk about hurdle rate. Hurdle rate, yes, I mean anything sh uh, should be like at least uh, uh, high single digit margin. Okay, uh, for us to e even evaluate any opportunity. And second, uh, it shouldn't impact my collection days. See, I mean, uh, um, uh, it's it's been a very strong learning curve for us uh, where our receivable days started coming down from 60 to 30, 40, right? And today we are very proud to tell you uh, all the investors and analysts who are evaluating or who are looking at our stock um, that uh, we are very proud to say that we are at a 30, 40 day of receivable uh, cycle. Right, and we just don't want to deteriorate that to uh, to buy out some sales, right, from a government project, right. So, so, um, so, so I mean, uh, hurdle rate. I mean, um, high single digit margin, and my um, payment should be safe, right. I shouldn't be running around. Um, see, I, I'm a brand company. I'm a trading company. I'm a marketing company, right, with a very strong manufacturing setup. So my job, uh, for the job for my salesman is to sell products, not to like beg for uh, receivable collections. I hope I hope this clarifies uh, uh, what you. Yeah, uh, yes, 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 it helps. Uh, my second question is very basic. Uh, I just wanted to understand how do we account for uh, the inventory. Uh, I think one of the statements that the management indicated that we do not expect inventory losses in Q2. Uh, now looking at where the PVC resin prices were, uh, it actually came down by uh, I think from 130 to 118, 119 rupees. 
and there has been a small bump of 2 to 2 and a half rupees uh, so just wanted to understand have we booked any inventory losses if it has been booked is it only on the resin part or it has also been booked on the finished goods and what gives us comfort to say that we are not looking at inventory losses in q2 no we never said that we are not looking at uh, uh, losses in q2 uh, see i mean see we are in a business of buying pvc right converting that into a product brand right with a lead time of 30 days so we will always carry that uh, basic risk the question is that how are we going to minimize that risk how we are going to mitigate the risk okay so first thing comes first is that you work on minimum low inventory levels right um, um, uh, so that is one um uh, second is that uh, you are able to revise your price list uh, um, um, regularly which is possible when you sell more and more value added products right in commoditized products it, it uh, the market uh, acceptance is always weak but in uh, value added products the market acceptance is always high right so that's how you mitigate the risk now in q1 of course there would be some marginal losses uh, we uh, uh, we would have booked uh, difficult to quantify and in q2 also whatever uh, the pricing fluctuation uh, we might foresee right accordingly we will do that but then what again i'm saying i mean on record uh, 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 from our side is that uh, whatever fluctuation might come up right on annualized full year basis sustainable margin is 13 to 15% in one of the quarters let's say pvc prices come down by 20 rupees 30 rupees per kg then i mean one can imagine what kind of route it gonna have on uh, all the pvc players not only apl not only apollo pipes right so 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 i guess i mean uh, our our job here sitting is that how do we ensure that we work on the sustainable 13 15% ebitda margin yet in uh, one or two quarters they could be plus minus uh, here and there but long term uh, margin is like uh, how we are going ahead with our business plan but uh, another i completely appreciate from a strategy standpoint what you are indicating uh, now if i look at uh, the inventory days in march and basis it was 55 days now just trying to understand how much would that be on june and basis and uh, have we already done a markdown on finished goods as well or was it only done on the raw material uh, or the resin inventory yeah actually ritesh ji when we talk about the inventory at the closing of march that inventory was we actually we had already anticipated the increases in the uh, increase in the uh, resin prices and so because of that we built it as our inventory in the first few months of january only we actually stopped all our purchases from next uh, february no no bookings were made for the uh, resin procurement plan uh, uh from february onwards so the uh, the loss on that account was uh, a bit lower we got lucky we got we were selling very aggressively in april month where uh, where the lockdown pressure was very minimum and we were very aggressively selling selling our products in that month may of course was disturbed because of lockdown and the pandemic again it was back to, uh, coming back to normal in the month of june so you can see the impact was there in the sales because of the drop in the month of june you can say that but we try to uh, minimize that loss because of the high prices in april we try to uh, maintain maximum uh, gain maximum profit and uh, minimize the loss of the same you can say in the very the same quarter so at exactly uh, this happened like this and because of that thing uh, you can say that uh, we uh, we minimize our loss secondly the resin is you can say that not 100% of our sales it is actually you can say if you take the total percentage it is roughly around 40 to 50% of our sales the balance is fitting great where the drop is not so high and the you can say margin doesn't drop too much over there and the gross margin was there along with that along cpbc there was no drop at all sgp there was no drop at all to so put together it was you can say maintainable uh, because of the quarter and the slight drop was there in the quarter which you can uh, witness also because of that uh, price drop uh, this is very encouraging uh, last question if i may Uh, sir we have seen uh, pvc prices uh, or the uh, piping product prices move in tandem with uh, the resin prices now given the shift which has happened from unorganized to organized uh, where the larger players are benefiting uh, just wanted to understand has the price increase which has been taken on fittings uh, say on a per kg basis is it more than the price increases what we have seen typically on a utvc pipe i'm just trying to get some sense on uh, the structural improvement in the margins given the shift in the market structure that we are looking at 
Yeah, of course, the margins increased in the you can say fitting segment. Further, as you see that we are continuously increasing our SKUs. So the baseline SKUs are already there with us, and whatever the balance SKUs that we are building up in the last quarter and then in the coming quarters, these have high volume, high margins, and the low volume. So the margins always improve with the sale of these goods. So there is always a you can say uh, you can say high margin or high you can say uh, you can say a beta level in these uh, fittings as compared to pipes where of course these players. Uh, of course, big players or the uh, regular players, they are uh, trying to sell more quantity because of the dropping prices. The margins, of course, reduce, but we were very much, very less focused on those products because of the low margin, and we are not too much, you can say, op optimistic about those products. So our total focus was on the building products, where we were high, high between the high sales, where and where the margins were not uh, so much under pressure. Whereas, of course, in the agriculture product, the margin margins were under pressure, and you can say that uh, the sales were a bit, you can say, uh, a challenge because of the low margins. But uh, we try to manage that thing, uh, uh, you can say, uh, uh, with the help of high, uh, this, uh, fitting sales, uh, high volume of fitting sales. Sure. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the detailed answers. Appreciate it. Uh, can we have the last question, please? Uh, sure, sir. We'll take the next question from the line of Pratha Bagarwal from ITI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Good uh, afternoon, sir. Uh, am I audible? Please go ahead. Uh, sir, just very basic question uh, regarding PVC prices. Uh, like uh, uh, for last few months, uh, it was understood that uh, the, as the situation normalizes, the prices may come back to normal. But as we saw that, uh, that didn't happen. And now we have understanding that things may not go back to the uh, last year's level. It may settle somewhere in between. So uh, what I'm asking is from the con context of the 1,000 crore sales uh, 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 target by uh, 523. So uh, we know that uh, it is based on very uh, uh, high double-digit volume growth as well as improvement and realization on the basis of uh, uh, value-added products and uh, uh, building material products. But my basic question was, uh, how do you see the swing in the basic PVC prices uh, which may swing the top line. EBITDA margin may sustain and every profitability may sustain, but the optical 1,000 crores, uh, how can it swing with the, if uh, there is a uh, drastic drop in PVC prices for whatever reason, and uh, how do you see it, how much down it can go based on the industry uh, dynamics? So that was my one only question, sir. Thank you. So, um, see, I mean, uh, when we say 1,000 crore, the basic assumption is um, um, 100,000 ton of sales volume at uh, selling price of 100 rupees per kg, right? So I think this should answer your uh, question, like if there is any swing plus minus, that's how it's going to impact us. Our our business plan suggests 1,000, uh, uh, 100,000 ton sales volume at uh, realization of rupees 100 per kg. Uh, for the regarding the PVC prices, if we talk about the PVC prices, they have not st yet stabilized. The prices that uh, that was going downwards, that has now stopped, and it is now coming back to track. So you can see that the disruption in supply is still there. So it is not very easy right now to source PVC, and the premium we may see in the coming days. Again, back to the uh, you can say previous level uh, before uh, COVID-2 level, the prices may go up to that level once again because of the shortage in the material and the uh, supply problem uh, is still continuing with the, with the product. Understood, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for answering that. Uh, uh, best wishes for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was our last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jigar Kandar for his closing comments. Yeah, thank you. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any further clarifications or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our team. Thank you once again for taking the time out to join us on this call. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, participants and management of Apollo Vibes. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Systematic Institutional Equities, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.